Welcome back to the Rebuild series. This is episode number 98, and so in the last episode, we took the seagull back out, did a couple of rescues. I went ahead off screen and some of the updates that I was talking about to the seagull, so it was nice to go through there. Uh, worked on some of the systems, got the autopilot tuned up a little bit more. I've yet to put the APU in the, yet, so I've uh, been building a couple things off screen. So I think we're going to go ahead and use one. I went ahead and slept, and we actually got some cool missions in the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. So this is going to be the one we do here. It's a uh, cargo plane in, is in distress is requesting assistance. Uh, 17,000. You can see the money is starting to come up on these missions. It uh, says it has a transponder locator. You know, uh, it's putting out transponder ping, but we are not going to bother with that. What we're going to do is take up one of my new toys that I spent in in inordinate amount of time working on last night and we're gonna go search this area i'm hoping that it is on land i'm pretty sure it is on land this is my new ultralight and so this one of the reasons why this took a little while to get working yesterday was the fact that it has no gyro so the flight characteristics have to be set up pretty well for it to operate without a gyro also often the smaller the build the more challenging it is because you have to be able to hide everything everywhere and I did a little bit of XML in here, but most of it is not XML'd. And so we use stock parts, and so it uh, took quite a bit. So it doesn't have an, uh, an enormous amount of fuel. It has these two small tanks. So we have, as you can see, I don't know why this tank didn't uh, fill up. Let's go ahead, and I want to get this max filled here, so let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully All right, so hopefully we're full of uh, diesel there, and we can get going. So let's tap the brakes. Circuit breaker's already on. All right, let's get taxing. So this only has those two small little diesel tanks. It is a two-cylinder modular engine. This is one of, another reason why I love modulars is, you know, you could never do some. Well, you could do something similar to this with a small motor, but it would take a, a lot more space. You can really, you have some customization with these. You know, for example, if you wanted a little bit more power, you could go three cylinders. If you want a little bit less power, you could use one cylinder. The modular engines are just that. They're modular. They really let you kind of change how you want to operate with them, and I love that. So let's go ahead and we'll put the flaps down. Well, actually, take off with flaps up. I'm starting to come up with some procedures for this, but it's cool little micro light, ultra light. They keep changing the names of what they want to call them. And uh, it actually has really good performance. It does about 140 knots uh, flat out. I can actually get pretty far. We should be able to get from here down to there. The search is going to be a little bit tough. We may need to land and get some fuel, but I'll check it. The fuel gauge isn't really working because what I'm not doing is I'm not adding up the two tanks. You know, I'm kind of reading the tank that's, I think, farthest away drains first. So... I'm trying to figure that out of the best way to do it. So let's go ahead and we'll take off and we'll head down there. So this is, as you can probably imagine, a VFR craft only. We have a compass, um, artificial horizon there. We have RPS and RPM, and we have engine temp. We have an altimeter and an airspeed uh, indicator. We have battery and fuel. And there is no gyro.
little bit south of top is 65 knots. That is my approach speed. Now we have full flaps in, as you can see, so this allows us to go nice and slow. We can go 60 knots. Now, as you bank in an aircraft, you're trading some of that lift that keeps you in the air to turn. As you do that, you need to add power because as you bank, the more bank angle you have, your stall speed goes up and up and up. Why? You had a wing that used to be, its only job was to keep you in the air. Well, now you're asking, hey, keep me in the air and help me turn. And so you don't, you need to add more power, you need more airflow, or else you're not going to have enough lift to be able to do it. So here we go, we're going to land in right here, bingo. And brakes, 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 brakes. And I have to take the power off. I had a little bit of power still in there. There we go. And as you can see, so one of the reasons I built this thing is I want to be able to do a little bit of off-field uh, off stuff here. As you can see, you know, I, I lined up really nicely on the road. I just, uh, I, you know, I was talking so much I didn't get to trim. But my trim should have been all the way like this for landing, right? You're... You know, as you slow down, right, you're getting less airflow over the wings, you're getting less lift, and the way that you counteract that is by, let me just quickly uh, shut down, the way you counteract that loss of lift is by increasing your angle of attack, pitching the wing up. And so when you're coming in to land, your deck angle, the, uh, you know, let's say you had a tilt sensor, your deck angle would be higher because you would need to in order to overcome that loss of lift. So, ooh, that was a good, I couldn't remember where the uh, I couldn't remember where the fuel is. Let's, so let's check our fuel really quick. I don't even know what it is because I have to I have to check my gauge. So that tank is zero and that tank has 16 liters. So we used I think it was 18 30, is 18 to 31 before so is that 49. So we had 49 liters in here and now we have 16 liters. So that's actually not bad. Let's uh, let's figure this out here. So um, 41 minus 16. So we use 25 liters. <laughs> Pretty economical to come from here down to we're right down here, and we had to do a little bit of a a little. We're right where are we right here, and we had to do a little bit of a turnaround. So we did all that distance on 25 liters. That's pretty inexpensive. You know, that's pretty cheap. And so I think this is gonna be a fun little little plane. You know, I, making small craft is sometimes the hardest and the most rewarding. You know, I love seeing it when somebody makes something really, really tiny. I did have to do a little bit of XML editing in there, you can see, just because I was starting to run out of room. I actually could probably hide those in the wings now. I probably actually don't need to XML. And that was part of my goal is to not have to do things like there are things you can do i i'm not sure how to do it i think you just uh decrease the xml values to make invisible microcontrollers uh there are a bunch of tr uh, tricks and things people have to do it i was trying not to do it that was part of my goal you know set a little bit of a goal for myself to not do any uh or do as minimal xml editing as possible and i you know part of my goal was no gyro you know, and so that was something that was also on the list of things to do. So as you can see, we have a little bit here. Pump out. Let's grab the pump out. All right. And so we're going to fill all the way up. I think I grabbed the wrong hose there. So now we're at 61. So we left with like 49 liters. Uh, this time we have 61. So remember, uh, it was only 25 liters for us to go from here to here. So we have 61. So we could almost do uh, down and back again. You know, so uh, down and back and down again. Uh, you know, so we can do quite a bit with this. So let's look at the mission. So we're currently down here. I did not see it on the way down. So what we want to do is head up this road and look around. It could be anywhere. It's a crash plane. You know, I have to uh, I have to play with this a little bit, get a little bit better flying it. I did a bunch of practice yesterday. Oh, Master Power needs to come on. Okay, what is up? What is up? My electricity gone? Oh, how did I eat my battery all the way up? Something's up with my battery. I'll fix it. Uh, let's see. What are, I'm trying to see what's up here. Why did this not? Let me just check the alternator. Okay, clutch pressure is one. 
All right, so I don't know why that happened. I should put an electrical plug on this. I did not put an electrical plug on this. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to turn on infinite electricity. Still have to test this sucker out. So we're going to put our flaps up. So one of the things that flaps are very helpful for is I would have to land this thing about 95 to 100 knots, which is fast for this size of an aircraft. And for, as you see, it has tiny little wheels. It loses its, it loses some stability with that. So I need about 100 knots to land it. Well, now I can land it about 60 to 65. Uh, 70 is even better. The faster you're going, again, the more airflow over your control surfaces and your wings, it gives you more lift and it gives you more control. And so sometimes you'll hear me say something's wallowy. So for example, if I'm, if I'm, uh, oh, I didn't mean to make all these roll. I guess I left the flapper on. Then. So this is over rolly for me. It rolls too fast and, uh, when I'm at high speed. And the reason is I get a lot of airflow over the control surfaces. That is making it so that I can bank much more easily. The reason I have it so sensitive is because when I come into land, I'm only do you know, I do 142 knots at cruise. I have a lot of airflow over the wing, a lot of control. When I come into land, when I need a lot of control, I'm only doing 60, 65 knots, let's say 70 knots, so about half. So I have a lot less control. So I need all that control in order just to be able to uh, maintain flight. You see, are we... Uh we're started. Okay, here we go. We were started. It just, um, it was revved up slowly. And there we go. If you look at the speedometer, just the bottom, the, the airspeed, as soon as it hits that middle notch, that's when we have, uh, we hit about 70 knots. And that is the speed we need to be able to fly. So I need to retrim. Right, every time you make a pitch power or configuration change, right, so we made a big pitch change, right? We put our nose down, I needed to trim, so I'm going to trim some more. So trimming is perfectly natural. You know, uh, one of the things a lot of people talk about is, you know, my helicopter, you know, will gently turn to the right. Well, one of the reasons your helicopter gently turns to the right is the torque effect. Well, guess what? A, you know, a helicopter pilot would step on the rudder pedal and they would use their tail rotor. So I think, you know, a lot of people are confusing kind of the arcade uh, flying that you would get with, uh, you know, with realistic flying. That's fine. One of the great things with this game is you can build your stuff however you want. You want to build it super arcade and it's solid as rock and it never drifts on you. Like right now, my hands are off, right? Uh, it's going to continue to exacerbate the roll. Watch this roll, pitch down, and I'm going to pitch my nose back up. So I have to control this. That's how we'll do it in real life. Now, a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people want a more simplistic, more arcadey, more comfortable feeling. To, there it is right there. It's on the airport. Nice. Um, and so they want something that they're more familiar with. They played a lot of arcadey games where that's how airplanes fly, and they don't want to have to, you know, go learn how to fly to play the game. And that's fine, too. And that's one of the things that's awesome with this game is you can design your vehicles however you want. And that's one of the things that's awesome about it is I want a super you know, hyper-realistic aircraft that I have to hand fly. And you get somebody else who wants one that, you know, as soon as your ass touches the seat, it automatically turns on and it um, it does everything for you. And guess what? We both can have that. And that's one of the fantastic things with the game. Now watch my speed. Speed's getting slow. I do not want to get below that half mark. I'm just going to take a quick screen grab here. It'd be kind of cool with the ultralight and the... Uh, the plane there. Nice. All right, so we're going to come in and land. I'm just going to land long on the runway. I don't want to have to go buzzing past the crash here. Power, 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 power. Oh, oh Clark. I forgot Clark doesn't have a collision. Ugh. <laughs> Is this Clark? I, f I haven't been here in a while. I forgot. Uh, people have reported this. Clark does not have a collision on its runway, so we will sink right into Clark. Ooh, maybe we can't do the mission. I don't know. We'll have to see. That was, uh, a lot of people have been putting that on. So, big thing you have to watch when you're landing, the, one of the most important things is that airspeed. So watch that needle. I want that needle about right up and down. And that's one of the reasons why it's set like that is, you know, I can, I can use a tiny little needle like that as long as I know where it needs to be. And so it needs to be straight up and down. I don't know where this collision ends, so I want to kind of be careful. I'm going to try to land in the uh, grass here. As I turn... 
as I pitch up, I know I need to add thrust. This is all realistic stuff that happens to IRL, and the game does a pretty good job of simulating it. You know, it's, it's kind of just gravity, but, you know, and it works. You know, so as I bank, I'm expecting to lose some of my lift vector that I need to stay in the air, I need to stay aloft. So I'm trying to find out. I'm hoping it's just the runway. Let's see if I can land on the taxiway. But this stuff is all very realistic, and so, you know, as somebody who has a lot of flying experience, it comes a second nature to me, and I kind of take for granted that a lot of people may not know what the right thing to do, you know, and so that's why I kind of talk about some of these things is, you know, I understand for a lot of people it's very a, a foreign concept, the different, uh, you know, parts of aerodynamics, the different parts of airmanship, you know, the ability to fly an aircraft, how to fly it well, and so, you know, I kind of take it for granted, and so that's why, you know, I like to talk about these things, you know. So let's go ahead, and we'll land on the taxiway. Hopefully there's a collision on the taxiway. Watch my speed. See that speed? As it gets slow, I add power. I got a little slow, I added power. Now look, there's a much better approach than the first one, because I didn't get slow. And I'm also finding out that about 65 is... Oh, there we go. No collision. All right. So that's fine. I'm going to just do this. I have to get out of the water. Okay. So this has no collision anywhere there. So I'm going to just do this. Map 3D vehicles. And we're going to go ahead and take that vehicle back to the workshop. I'm going to teleport there and do... I don't, I don't know if we can do the mission. Let's go ahead and look at the mission. So, again, this is why Creative Menu is on, is I can play with this, I can test things out, and I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, you know, because I would die, if, you know, in-game if that happened. Let's see. Okay, so we're not going to be able to do this. They're the, they're the people. <laughs> we're going to go under the map, and we're going to grab them. And so, yeah, this mission just can't be done because uh, completely, you know, I can, I can do what I'm doing, but I can't uh, completely get out of here because uh, of the of the bug. But it was good to get down here. It was good to find it. As you can see, it looks like there's a collision mask that is missing there. So there's a collision problem there. I'll make a bug report, or I will support a bug report. Most likely, you know, people have already reported this. So it's interesting. Yo, you know what it is? I know how they did it. So when they, it's probably done with an add-on, and this is static. So because this is static, it will sit there. I don't know if I can... I'm trying to see if I can find a Fire X inside. But I bet this is all static. And because this is static, it can actually float above the runway here. So let's jump over. Take a quick little pick. And uh, let's see what I want to do here. But I don't know what I want to do here because I'm not going to be able to accomplish this mission. You know, because I got the people... I, I had to, you know, I had to despawn my vehicle. So it looks like I'll put this in the bug report. So as you can see, all of this area here is all, has no collision. So people have reported this. I'll support it instead of making my own bug report. I will back it up. And I have a little bit of video evidence. Let's see. That's hard. So it looks like it's just the taxiway and the runway. Looks like these two areas here are not uh, operable. So that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it here, but uh, we'll move on. I know people, you want some help, but uh, let's see where we at here. We're here. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to teleport around because we kind of need to. Or else we're not going to be able to do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and teleport there. So, again, another reason to keep creative menu on. You could definitely see that as being something frustrating if, you know, you didn't have the ability to just say, oh, teleport, bring my vehicle back to the workbench, put it back away. You know, but I enjoyed flying down there. As you can see, that's pretty fuel efficient. 25 liters. You know, we could I could have gone with one tank on that one. So let's see. Um, I kind of want to take a land vehicle here. Let's take a different land vehicle here. We can take a tow truck. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll take the tow truck and we'll go rescue these people. So just uh, feels a little weird starting the mission and not finishing it. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Park a brake, a door. All right, let's go. So yeah, so this Liam's garage here, or Liam's, ga Liam's gas station, is it is uh, free, that workbench. So, you know, one of the complaints people have had is, for example, if you start at the beginner base up here, 
uh, you don't have any... It, it's kind of difficult because you only have a water base here. But what you can do is you can also utilize these. They're, they're a little bit of a hike, but it allows you to kind of operate on the Industrial Frontier Island without uh, having to buy anything. So that allows you to get going a little bit quicker. So, you know, you can kind of move in and uh, work on the mainland if you'd like. So I'll go ahead and time lapse this out, and we'll see you when we get there. So here we are, we're approaching Clark. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link to the most populous uh, bug report in the description. So if, you, if you're if you unfamiliar how, how the bug tracker works, you know, they have their own Geometa bug tracker. Well, what you want to do is go on there, and I highly recommend searching. Uh, it's what they'll do is, you know, if the, you get a bunch of duplicates, they'll close yours as a duplicate and they'll link to the one they're using. So say, I don't know, maybe the first one that comes up, you know, despite, you know, how well it's been written up, that's probably the one they're going to use or the first one they see. And then they'll, uh, close the others as duplicates and they'll link to the main one they want you to support. So if you go there and you support that one by clicking the little star icon, the more stars it has, the more likely they're going to fix it. And, you know, would be my imagination is, you know, that shows that a lot of people, this is something a lot of people want fixed. And that is low-hanging fruit. They can look at that and say, hey, 200 people want us to fix Clark. That's important to them. It takes us two hours to do. That's worth the time. If they have two people who want to fix Clark, they say it's going to take us two hours to do. Maybe that's not worth the time for two people. We'll go, we'll go tackle a bug that's affecting 200 people. So again, you can be an active participant in getting the parts of the game fixed that you want fixed. Um, so I'm going to teleport, or not teleport. I'm going to no clip in here because I cannot. You know, the floor is lava. I can't step. On, oh, wow, there's a lot of people there. <laughs> I did read there were six people. I so I can't. I can't help. I I might be able to throw them out and do all right here. Uh, this is going to be ugly. All right, this is going to be ugly. I didn't plan for this because I'm having to throw them in the... I'm having to throw them under the runway. Dude, you are not going to make it, man. I, I Initially, I was trying to bring one of my cars, and it's not working right now. So I need... That has a bunch of supplies I need. What else? I'm trying to see. It looked like... See, this. I saw the first aid box. I'm trying to get some extra first aid gear here. So let's go down, Kerplunk. We can walk through here. And uh, we'll be fine. All right, so we need all these people here to follow us. This one, we're just not going to be able to complete this mission the way we should. Uh, what I should do is, you know, SRS uh, does some great rescue stuff. You know, I should uh, build my own kind of uh, 
you know, I'm often inspired. I've reviewed a bunch of their stuff. They do a great job with that. And so I should uh, should build my own, like, uh, at least amber lamps. So I, I at first I thought it was just the people I could see. I didn't really look. I was going to take a car. Uh, you're not going to make it. Uh, sorry, dude. The car also, the convertible, I was going to take that, but I had a steering problem. I hadn't finished it. I thought I had finished it. If you could try to stand up and stay alive, we'll be all right. This person is probably Gonzo. The person I, that was incapacitated, they're definitely Gonzo. You know, I'm using a tow truck for this. I'm not using uh, anything that I can revive people. But it would be kind of cool to make an ambulance. Maybe that's what I didn't mean to grab the rope. Maybe it'd be kind of cool to make an ambulance at some point. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump in here and get getting, or else we're uh, we're just gonna lose everybody here. So we'll see. I don't know. Uh, these people might be all right. Bye bye. <laughs> so one thing a lot of people don't understand about why the wheels squeal in game. Uh, I've done a bunch of testing with this. You know, I do a lot of gearbox work. And one of the reasons why you get a squeal in wheels, uh, let's talk about real life and let's talk about in game. You generally will squeal your wheels when your torque is greater than the uh, coefficient of friction of the wheel. So essentially, the wheel has a certain amount of grip. The wheel will spin when the coefficient of friction, how much friction you have against the ground, uh, when you have more torque than you have friction. And it will not do it if you have less torque than you have friction and so what happens in game is we actually get wheel slip on both occasions which isn't really realistically correct but I know I think I know why they did that was one of the ways is your engine would constantly be stalling if you didn't get your gear ratios wrong and people would be pulling the hair out and it would be miserable and so I think what the devs did was they made it so that you can... I'm going to just ride the railroad tracks here. i, I got to get these people done. We, we can go off-road a little. And so, for example, in real life, if you have your... Let's say you, you go in first gear, you rev way up, and you dump the clutch. So you let go of the clutch. That engages the clutch. What's going to happen is the wheel is going to spin. And it's because you have so much torque because you revved up, right? Force equals mass times acceleration. So... The more acceleration, the more speed, the more RPS you give it, that's going to then give you more torque. And so now you have enough torque that you're going to break away from the friction of the ground. Okay. And so if you are in a lower gear than you need, it is realistic for you, say, to turn, to make a turn, for you to dump the clutch, and for you to spin up your tires. It's not realistic when you're in too high of a gear. Now, in game, we can be in too high of a gear and our wheels will also spin. So we spin with both too low of a gear and too high of a gear. So often people will confuse this that they'll be wondering why their wheels are... Oh, excuse me. Ah, goodbye. Uh, they'll, they'll wonder why this happened and it can be because you're also in too high of a gear. So you'll often see people, their gear ratio is too high and that, you know, they're ask, they're essentially trying to, they have their, um, their gearbox facing the engine and they're trying to ask too much of it. And what's going to happen in game, of course, is the wheel's going to spin. In real life, you would stall or, or you would lug. And so in game, we get it where it will actually spin up both time, both ways too low and too high and so often you'll see this and so sometimes it's counterintuitive you think about real real life and you say okay I must be in too low of a gear if I'm spinning my tires well actually you can be you can get it when you're in too low of a gear and also when you're in too high of a gear so you have to keep that in mind you know uh, for example that race car I if I put it in too high of a gear I'll spin my tires up as I'm going 130 miles an hour and so we get that both ways in games you kind of have to keep that in mind it's not 100% realistic. So if you can get your engine in the correct and your transmission to work in the correct gear ratios, you'll often not have that issue. Uh, shut, I shut the engine off. All right, let's see what we want to do next here. So this mission we're just not going to be able to fi finish because of Clark 
and the issue with that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end up the episode there. So a little bit shorter than usual. Took out the new ultralight. That was fun. I enjoyed that. That is working pretty well. The only issue was uh, Clark has no collision. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm enjoying getting back into some missions after doing a bunch of mining stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.